Hi Di, how are you going? Well, that's good, yes, I'm very well, thank you. It's good to talk with you again. Um, following on from our previous discussion, I've taken into account Jason's unique developmental, socio-emotional and learning characteristics that I've sort of observed from Jason in the classroom and have crafted three teaching practices that I'm going to share with you today. Just so you're aware of what we're going to be doing with um, Jason in the classroom to help maximise his engagement um, in a variety of settings. Um, the teaching practices we're going to talk about today are supported by different streams of literature and I really believe they'll help Jason become more engaged in the classroom activities and lead him onto the path of becoming a more successful student and learner, which is what we talked about in our previous um, meeting. I have got to say Jason is very fortunate to have such a caring youth worker like yourself working with him and helping him out. Um, <laughs> so yes, the purpose of this meeting will be for me to identify the ways in which we're going to help J Jason out in the classroom moving forward. Um, so yes, we've had, we've identified that his strengths really rely sorry really lie in the um, arts based and physical education um, courses he's in. Um, he shows a lot of commitment to physical physical activity, he excels in teamwork and creative problem solving, which will be great for him moving forward, creating friendships with his peers. Um, because one of my biggest concerns for Jason is that he's not fitting into the broader school community. Um, I sort of have a sneaking suspicion that because of all of the transitions um, in his life the last couple of years, living in different homes, going to different schools, he's feeling quite anxious and overwhelmed about sort of making those connections with his peers, which is so important in um, helping him to become more engaged in the classroom. Um, so my first sort of teaching strategy that I'm going to be helping Jason out with is a responsive strategy to the behaviour issues we've been having with him of late. Um, and it's drawn from Positive Behaviour for Learning, which is a Education Queensland sort of um, advocated response. So there's specific practices to create... Um, Classrooms that are managed effectively so that students can really get the most out of their time in the class. Um, and I'm going to be specifically looking at creating clear corrections and consequences for his actions that are fair and consistent so that if... So he becomes more self-aware of his actions and the effects they have on the classroom to his own learning and also to the learning of others. So he becomes a bit more sort of socially aware of what he's doing in the classroom. Um... So I'm going to be displaying positive behaviours all throughout our classes together. And yes, when he is um, disrupting the classes, I'm going to give him fair, consistent um, and clear corrections or consequences for him to follow. So he knows that my response to his actions are genuine and that sort of helps create a trusting relationship as well. Um, you know, say if he sort of acts up similarly to the way he did, I need to... Um, tell him what his consequence is and actually follow through with that so he knows that I um, stick to my word. And so he, it sounds funny, but it's actually a form of um, trusting that will build between us. Um, the second practice I'm going to be looking at to die um, is sort of a student-centered structured lesson. Now, instead of um, sort of the previous um, strategy being responsive to his action, this is going to be preventative, so it sort of deters him from acting out in class. Um, so in the lessons, I'm going to be create very structured lesson plans so that the more often Jason comes into class, he's going to be prepared for what's in store. Um, he's going to know the structure, what we're going to be doing. So each lesson, I will explicitly state the learning goals and success criteria in the anticipatory set so he knows exactly what we're going to be doing in that class. I'm going to explain and define the steps of the lesson so he's aware of what's to come. He's not going to feel overwhelmed and stressed or frustrated when he meets challenges. Um, I'm going to direct activities that provide clear transitions between the contextual information and the instructions for activities so he's going to you know, um, be able to separate the two ideas from one another. And this um, just helps clarify for Jason what's expected of him in the classroom and sort of the activities that he's going to be needing to responding to. Um, it's an evidence-based approach um, and it really helps students who are feeling a bit unsettled in the classroom. The third teaching practice I'm going to look at and sort of implement um, for Jason is 
um, well, this is just one example, but I'm going to be really trying to embed social learning strategies into the class. Um, I'm worried that Jason isn't um, settling in and finding friends in the school. Um, it's so important for kids to learn collaboratively collaboratively with one another. Um, I don't want Jason feeling isolated. Um, I want him to feel a sense of belonging because creating a safe environment for his well-being will help him be able to engage a lot more thoroughly in class time. Um, so jigsaw activities, for example, you give the students a task, say like a 500 word text article or something in English, you break the class into groups and ask them to study specific parts of the article, sort of draw connections, draw understandings together, and then they're able to share those understandings with other students. So this will help him build communication skills, negotiating skills, and he's going to slowly be able to um, not have to rely so heavily on the literacy and numeracy skills that he's sort of lacking at the moment. Um, he's going to be able to talk through his answers and sort of get a little bit of articulation out. Um, so I know that we're not specifically targeting developing his the foundational gaps yet. My main priority is making Jason feel safe at school um, and helping him learn through differ differentiated techniques. So the continued talking and oral um, techniques of learning will help him get onto the path of improving his literacy and numeracy skills. Now, Di, do we have any questions about today? No? Okay, well, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'll talk to you soon.